know, this uh, Minwajimo is an opportunity for everyone to get involved. It's, it's hopefully a conversation looking back over the span of years, of uh, three decades of time, and even longer. Yesterday we heard a number already of personal accounts reaching back in a time. Folks, I heard some comments not only uh, through the mic and during our ceremonies, but also in personal conversation at, at tables. But we were now reaching back into the 1950s and the 1940s. So today and tomorrow, for the next two and a half days, we're going to be involved in uh, reminiscing, certainly. There's going to be a, an element of nostalgia as we go back into these decades of time and celebrate this coming together of a people during the period of time in the 60s and 70s, during the days of activism, the Indian Civil Rights Movement, which we know took place on the tail end of other civil rights movements of groups across the country. The 1960s, we remember, was a time of unrest in America. We found people reaching out for the first time, acknowledging their own strengths of their ethnicity. Folks, uh, right about the time that television was coming into play in the dining rooms of homes all across America, do you know that for the first time in the 1950s, people were sitting down for their evening meals watching, to new, watching the news. And the African American Civil Rights Movement was on the front page of newspapers and television for the first time. I think people were getting indigestion from what they were seeing going on in America. We had a very unpopular war in Southeast Asia. We talk about looking back in the decades of time, the unrest in America. Folks, this is the tenor then at which American Indians, too, began to stand up with a sense of pride about their own heritage. Folks, it wasn't the first time, of course. We have historians in the audience. We have attorneys in the audience. We have uh, spiritual leaders with us here this week. We have elders. We have people, I look around the room, people I haven't seen Folks, we're talking about decades now since the 1980s. I was coming back to the reservation from grad school in 1975 and got elected to the tribal council. There are prominent tribal leaders at about that time, the mid-70s, the early 70s, who, aren't, who have walked on, who aren't here with us today. But I look back at that time as one in which, as Tom Molson was reminiscing yesterday about some of our elders, prominent tribal leaders, who took the reins and the control of tribal government and began building a future for their tribes. People who weren't educated in the sense that we know it today, but yet, through a lot of common sense and a lot of courage, provided the leadership for their tribes to do the things that occurred with us during this uh, off-reservation uh, treaty litigation. We had the Tribble brothers here yesterday, and I'm sure they're going to be along here this morning sometime. And there were others, folks. We go back in time, and we hear names like Larry Leventhal, who was this attorney kind of a rogue attorney who kind of put the idea in a number of people's minds. There were students at uh, St. Scholastica College, for example, back in 1970 and 71, who heard Larry Leventhal say something about uh, reserve treaty rights. And folks, I was talking with uh, some tribal members over at Mille Lacs this past year. 
And in fact, they were in the classroom when they heard Larry Leventhal mention that using the Treaty of 1837 was one example of where a tribe reserved, even though it sold its land, it reserved certain rights and did so explicitly as a binding contract. And folks, it's from those beginnings then and during that period of time of civil unrest and protest including the American Indian Movement and other civil rights Native American groups in America. It was under that tenor that people rose up and protested and got arrested. And that spun everything off, and that's why we're here um, 35 years later and uh, celebrating an event uh, of the birth of this organization 25 years ago. But I see, as I look across the room, I see the faces of people or their descendants. And certainly some of those tribal leaders who have passed on, who had the control of those reins at that period of time would be very proud. And I also heard that yesterday coming from a, a, a woman leader out here on the grounds. Folks, we have a full program ahead of us, and we have a schedule, and uh, we need to make some announcements. But what I see here, folks, is a virtual history book of resources in this room. And this meeting is tended, intended to be a conversation, a two-way conversation, a three-way and a four-way conversation. Let's get underway and let's talk about some of the things that need to be done. We need to make sure that everybody who's in here registers. And folks, those registration tables are back there on my right. Papers are stacked over here on this table. Folks, the papers are going to guide our conversation. They're going to guide our focus today with the panels. And again, make sure that you have to follow this tight, rather tight schedule, folks. There'll be opportunity to talk to the panelists once they complete.